Dear students, uh, this is the solutions video for the first chapter that is physical quantities and its units. For the previous question papers, I am given the solutions here. First question that is complete the figure 1.1 to show each quantity under its unit. Here they given quantity on the left side of the table and the units on the right side of the table. So speed, it is defined as distance per time. Speed is the distance per time. Then unit is meters per second. What about density? Density is the how much amount of volume is there? particular concentrated within the mass. So mass per unit volume we are defining as the density. So density is equal to I'm writing here Density is equal to mass divided by for mass unit is kg and for volume unit is meter cube that is kg and volume minus three. So, answer is kg meter per minus 3. Coming to the next one, second inverse is the unit. Second inverse. Seconds is the unit for, seconds is the unit for time. Time. Is unit for time. Unit for time. But here they given the unit as second inverse. Second inverse means what is of one divided by time? One divided by time is frequency. Frequency. So this inverse is the unit for frequency. Frequency. Next coming to the electric field strength. Electric field, electric field strength. Electric field strength is uh, defined as potential per distance. Potential per distance or voltage per distance. That is equal to is equal to potential. Are voltage for distance. This is one definition. So it is equal to volts divided by meter. That is volts meter inverse. Volt meter inverse. If you convert into Newton coulombs, we will get this one as Newton. Coulomb inverse, Newton Coulomb inverse, and base unit is here. You can see kg meter is power minus two Coulomb inverse. Here voltage, that is potential, is nothing but energy per unit time. So potential or voltage is equal to energy per time. So energy unit is you know for energy it is unit is coulombs. Time you know the unit. From that one you can derive it. And coming to the last one, kg meters per second. Kg meters per second. It is a momentum. Momentum. What is momentum? Momentum O is equal to product of mass and velocity. Mass is kg and the velocity is meters per second. So answer is kg meters per second. Second meters, second inverse, meters per second. This is the uh, 
and sulfur uh, plus two. Okay, students. So the, this is the uh, answer for analysis for the first question. Okay. Next one is state the difference between scalar quantity and the vector quantity. Very simple. Scalar has the magnitude and it doesn't have the direction and it has the unit. Vector has the magnitude and direction along with the unit. Okay. Two forces magnitude 6 newtons and 8 newtons act at a point P. Both the forces act away from the point P and angle between them is 40. So here it's shown 40 degrees, two forces, one force 6 newtons, other force is 8 newtons. Draw a vector diagram to determine the magnitude of the resultant two forces. Very simple. Uh, diagram has a correct shape. This is the magnitude, two forces. One is 6 newton, other one is 8 newton. And the resultant one is, what is the resultant one? Resultant one is, uh, uh, how can we calculate the resultant one? Resultant, we have to calculate the, with the equation of under root, under root, uh, first one, Square plus second one square. I'm writing here. To, to find the uh, resultant force between these two uh, forces, six newton and eight newton. This is an equation we have. It is f one square plus this is f one. This is F2. And the resultant force in this direction, the angle between these two forces is a quantity. In this particular case, what we will take, we will take. And uh, students, uh, especially for this type of the uh, uh, questions, you don't need to draw the figure. Uh, that is what the representation figure for you. Mm, that is uh, again and again. Right here. This is the uh, eight newtons force. This is a F2, and this is a competing as a F1. F1, six meters. And the angle between these two is a C, 40 degrees. And here it is the resultant force. Resultant force. So, you observe the red, this is the presentation of the red. So this is the resultant force. So if we substitute what we will get, resultant force, I'm taking F resulting, that is equal to F1 squared, 6 squared, F6 plus F2 squared, and now 64 plus 2F1, F2, 2 times of 6, 12, 8 times of 8, 96 times of cross 4. So cross 4 here. So, then the calculation two times of six times of eight times of four square. Answer is seventy three point five. Seventy three point five. Total is number two one seventy three point. If you do the calculation for this one, so under root 173.44, and the answer is 13.10, that is 13.2 newtons. Okay, so this is the answer space. Next, uh, question number three, I will be discussed uh, question number three and I am giving the solution here. So, a student has been asked to determine the linear acceleration of the curve as it moves down this way. He 
sets up the operating cases as shown in the figure. This is the dot dot in the Gutia 19 issue. The time t to move from rest to a distance t is found for different values of t. A graph of y axis is plotted against t squared x axis. Then, much is the uh, questions, you know, whatever questions first we will see. Theory suggests that the graph is a stripe line through the origin. Name the feature of the uh, 3.2 indicates the presence of a random error and systemic error. Actually, theoretical value here is the uh, uh, same as stripe line, but uh, practical values we are getting at the uh, other points, other vertices, which are not on the stripe line. So, random errors. These are the vertices which are we are considered as the random models, which are uh, induced randomly by that time. Coming to the systematic error, systematic error is the error which will give the unsecureness of the mathematical coordinates. Mathematical coordinates that is systematic error. Systematic error usually uh, induced by the system not by the human being. That is uh, systematic error. Okay, students. So, uh, random error because of this uh, uh, vertices which are uh, you know, denoted not on the uh, straight line and systematic error intersection of the points we will get. Coming to the gradient, determine the gradient of the line graph. Here, if you want to find the uh, gradient, simple equation we have. What is that equation I am writing here? Gradient is equal to gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So we take the values from the graph. We we'll take the values from the graph. Here, uh, approximate coordinate system on the line where we are getting. Uh, this is approximate. And y axis is 100. On x axis, this is 10. So y2, x2. X2 is 10, Y2 is, I am taking as the 100 and you can take 99 also, no problem. Here, initial point I am taking, that is, uh, this is uh, 0 0.6 on um, uh, X axis, Y is 0. I am writing here, that is, uh, Y2 is 99, Y1 is 0, X2 is 10. And the x1 is 0 0.6. If so you do the calculation, uh, 99 divided by uh, that is a 9.4, uh, which is approximately 10.53. 10.53. Uh, which is uh, having a unit as meters per second square because on x axis this is a t square t square is nothing but second square and the distance centimeter so uh, sorry here uh, we have to use the centimeter per second square centimeter per second square this is the answer for uh, acceleration acceleration next one I'm sorry not acceleration Question two, that is a gradient. Coming to the acceleration, use your answer one to calculate the acceleration of the toy. Down the slope, explain your everything. Means down the slope means at the lowest point, what is the acceleration? To find the acceleration down the slope. Here, initial velocity is zero. Here, what is the acceleration? How can we find it? We have the kinematics equation. That is,
equation is is equal to to be plus of the square here is equal to root of this of which is square it is the unit unit is zero because initial velocity is zero then acceleration is equal to two times of s divided by t square is the acceleration is the acceleration what is the two what is the s and what is the t square here s is the distance traveled This is the distance travel. How much distance it travels? Next, and the t is the time taken by the object. T is the time taken by the object. Here, uh, not taking more time. So. So acceleration is equal to t. See this one from this equation. Acceleration equal to two times of s divided by t square. S is the distance. T square is the uh, x-axis. S by t square is nothing but gradient. So here, two times of gradient. Gradient. Then we will get the value as zero point two one two meters per second squared. This is the acceleration. Students, question four: Make estimates of the following quantities: speed of sound, density of air, mass of contractor. Volume of the head of an adult person. So for this type of the questions, how can we give the answer? So here uh, you can give the ranges of the values. Ranges of the values: speed of sound in air. It, it uh, starts from 100 meters per second to maximum 900 meters per second. Uh, coming to the density, its mass per volume, uh, especially in air, at room temperature is. Zero point five kg per meter to two one point five kg per meter to next mass of protractor very small protractor uh, it may uh, stores from five grams to fifty grams next volume of the head of an adult person uh, how can we find the volume of head uh, means if you want to find the volume what is a possibility ranges can be two times of the head in Centimeter to two, nine times of ten to the second. That is the uh, volume. Next question number five. Derive the SI base unit of force. Force is equal to what is the equation for force? Here the base unit of force is equal to S per newton second. Is equal to. Yeah. F is equal to m times of a mass. This is kg, and the acceleration. This is meters per second squared. So base unit is kg meters s power minus two. This is the base unit per mass here mm -hmm. students the question b is spherical ball of radius r experience is a resistor force of 2 a as it moves through the 
air at speed A. The resistive force F is given by the expression F is equal to C times of R times of B, where C is the form state. Derive the SI base unit of the form state of C. So here I am writing the equation F is equal to C multiplied with R multiplied with B. Then what is the equation for C in terms of force? It is equal to force divided by R times of B. This is the equation for C from the given expression. We know the unit per F that is force is equal to MA kilogram per acceleration A meters per second squared is called minus two. For R radius, what is the unit? It is meter. And for the velocity V, it is meters per second. Meters per second. So, unit per C is kg meter times of S power minus 2 divided by meter times of meter S power minus 2. We will, we will get the answer as kg meter per minus 1 S power minus 1. Here meter square, if meter square comes to the numerator, meter power minus 2, here meter power plus 1, meter power minus 1. Here s power minus 1, it comes to the numerator, s power plus 1, s power plus 1 times of s power minus 2, then we will get s power minus 1. This is the answer for question B. The ball is dropped from rest through height of 4.5 meters, assuming a resistance to be negligible, calculate the final speed of the ball. Height H is given as 4.5 meters. So initial speed is 0 or velocity is 0. And if it is falling from, dropped from the rest position, here U is equal to 0. Its height is 4.5 meters. So what is the final velocity before it hits the ground? That is the question. So we have the equations v square is equal to u square plus 2gs in terms of initial speed, final speed. And we have the one more equation v is equal to u plus at. These two equations are called as kinematics equations. To find the final velocity, in terms of the acceleration, first of all, we should calculate the t. But in problem, they didn't give any t value. Here, if you observe this equation, initial speed is zero. And we know the acceleration because of the gravity of earth. And the S is given nothing but height. It is an uh, object traveled uh, from initial point to final point. And you have to find the velocity. So, from this equation, we can do it. How can we do? So v square is equal to, I'm taking the equation, v square is equal to u square plus 2gs, which is the equation. So here, u is 0, then I will write this one as the v square is equal to 2gs. So v is equal to under root 2 B, yes, but we can write this one as under two, two, G, H. Here, yeah, S is nothing but H. If you substitute the values under row, two times, sir, what is the acceleration due to gravity? That is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. And what is the height? That is equal to 4.8. Five meters. Then what will we get? Answer is I'm doing 
टू टाइम्स नाइन पॉइंट एट टाइम्स फोर पॉइंट फाइव इट इज इक्वल टू एटी एट पॉइंट टू एटी एट पॉइंट टू In final speed is equal to nine point three nine nine point three nine meters per second. This is the difference. Okay, students. Uh, next one is uh, the ball has mass of. 15 grams and radius of 1.2 centimeters. The numerical value of the constant in the equation in V is equal to 3.2 times of 10 power minus 1. When measured using the SI system of units, show quantitatively whether the assumption made in one is justified. Here, let me go the let me go to the first one. What is the first one? Which is the f is equal to c r v. This is the equation. F is the force, resistive force. V is the speed, and r is the radius. R is the radius. So we are we given the some numerical values for those parameters. So I'm writing here. This is the equation from that we saw. If we see the point, ah, C B R C R B. We can take any equation. What is the mass? Mass is given as fifteen grams. Fifteen grams. Radius is one point two centimeters. In point two centimeters. In this case, they given the C as three point two times of ten power minus four, which is the C value. So, show quantitatively whether the assumption made in one is justified. In one we said the unit for C is kg. That is meter inverse decimals. This is the uh, this unit we derived. We derived let's see, and we said equation is balanced. So here we have to check whether that concept is correct or not. If we do here, force is equal to what is the force? Force is equal to Mass into acceleration, or mass into, and R is radius times of C times of. So from this one, mass is given fifteen grams times of G, which is equal to times of R, which is equal to R one point two centimeters times of. C. Three point two times of ten power minus four times of three. Just a minute. Okay. So here G is nine point eight, and V is from previous question that is nine point three nine meters per second. So if we do the if we do the calculation, F is equal to mg. It is equal to 15 grams multiplied with 
9.8 meters per second squared. If you do the calculation, 15 times of 9.8, which is equal to 57. So it's in Newtons, it is equal to 0 0.15. 0 0.15 newtons because convert grams into kilograms, you will get the answer. Next, here RCV, R times of C times of V, that is equal to radius 1.2 multiplied with doing 1.2 centimeters multiplied with 3.2 times of. Minus four. Times nine point four. This is a good answer, guys. 3.6 times 10 power minus 3. 10 power minus 3. Just check the values. It is 0 0.15. This is 3.6, which is larger. Force. So, force is greater than or equal to. So, it is justified. students just next question um, it is the speedometer sorry it's not the speedometer fuel meter of the power the uncalibrated scale and the pointer of meter are shown in figure and calibrated scale it is. The pointer is shown in the zero position. The meter is to be used to indicate the volume of fuel in the tank of a car. A known volume of V of fuel is poured into the tank and that deflection theta of the pointer is noted. Uh, figure 1.2 shows the variation with theta of V. Here you can see the graph. Here uh, on x axis, theta that is inclination, uh, that is deflection of the needle, and uh, it is the capacity volume uh, that is volume per 10 power 3 centimeter cube. Here, question is calibration of the scale at 20 times of 10 power 3 uh, centimeter cube intervals. So, uh, here uh, 20 times of 10 power 3 cubic centimeter intervals is in the 10 power 3 centimeter cube units. So 10 power 3, 10 power 3 cancel and 20 is the scale. So on y-axis, 20, 40, 60, 80 are the scales. These are the scales, 20, 40, 60, 80 are the scales for the angular different values. So here, if you want to measure the exact values, 20 we will get at 40 degrees. Next, 40 we will get at 70 degrees. And 60 we will get at 90 degrees. And 80 we will get at 100 degrees. So mark the possible position of for your volume of 1.2 10 power 5 centimeter, sorry, 1.0 times of 10 power 5 centimeter cube. So 1.2 times of 10 power 5 means it is the 100. For 100, what is the possibility value? It is more than, if you observe the readings here, 
for 20 to 40, it changes from 40 to 70. Uh, from 40 to 60, it changes from 70 to 70 to 90. And from 60 to 80, it changes from 90 to 103. So, up at 100, at 100 from the graph, you can say that it is more than 103, 103, and maybe less than, if you take the same uh, scale here, maybe less than 150, that is. And here, suggest one advantage of this scale as compared with the uniform scale for measuring fuel volumes in the tank of the car. So, here, by taking the long scales instead of the uniform scales, what happened is easily we can measure the, we can identify the capacity of the, uh, the particular uh, fuel tank. That is the answer, students. Okay. This is the graphical analysis. Next one is question number seven. Yes. Make a reasonable estimates of the following quantities. Frequency of audible sound wave. Audible sound wave means we have the different sound waves. Normal voice, uh, music, violin, different uh, musical instruments are there. According to the uh, things, we, we can take the audible frequency. Here, for a human being, that is uh, three, uh, 30 hedges to, 30 hedges to, 3 kilograms, sorry, 30 kilohertz. 30 hedges to 30 kilohertz. So in some text sheets, they uh, given the values as the 20 hedges to 20 kilohertz. Wavelength in nanometer, ultraviolet radiation. Ultraviolet radiation is, it is very high value. So I will give the, I will show you the answer here. Yes, 20 hedges to 20 kilohertz. Uh, ultra radiation range. 10 nanometers to 400 nanometers. Next, the mass of plastic, 30 centimeters roller, small roller mass. What is the value? So it is 10 grams to 100 grams. We can give any value. That's not the problem. Because uh, plastic is clearly mentioned. Small roller plastic material. Maximum, maximum 100 grams. Next one. Next one is the density of air at the atmospheric pressure. We have the typical value that is 0 0.1 kilograms per meter cube. That is the minimum value. Maximum is 10 kg per meter cube. Okay, students. Next. Question number 8. State the most appropriate instrument or instruments for the measurement of the volume. To measure the diameter of, diameter of Y or diameter about 1 millimeter. Uh, if you want to measure the small, small thickness of any wire or optical fiber cable, we have to use a micrometer that is screw gauge, screw gauge. Next, to find the resistance of your filament lamp, which one we have to use? To find the resistance, which one we have to use? To find the resistance of a uh, filament lamp, we have two options. One is ohmic meter, which is used to find the resistance. Second one is by using the basic method, which you studied in grade 10, that is calculation of the resistance by using voltmeter and ammeter. So you can use voltmeter and ammeter. Uh, from those two uh, uh, tools, we can find the voltage and current. From that, R is equal to V by I. Uh, next, uh, ohmic meter. If we connect the ohmic meter across the resistor, directly it gives the resistance value in units. Next, peak value of an alternating voltage, AC voltage. 
to find the ac voltage either we can use ac voltmeter or we can use cro cathode ray oscilloscope next the mass of a cube of aluminum is found to be 580 grams with an uncertainty in the measurement of 10 grams each side of Next one is the mass of a cube of aluminum is found to be 580 grams with an uncertainty in the measurement of 10 grams. Each side of the cube has a length of 6 centimeters with absolute uncertainty of 0.1 centimeter. Calculate the density of aluminum with its uncertainty. Express your answer to the appropriate number. Significant figures. So here, if I want to take the data first, and here we need to find the density what is the equation for density density is equal to mass Then we will get the answer as density. Why we D divided by 18. So 32.4. This is equal to 32. This is grams per centimeter. Grams per centimeter. Now, let us find the percentage of uncertainty. Uncertainty. Percentage of uncertainty. First for mass. Mass. What is the value, deviated value? That is absolute uncertainty. 10 divided by. Total value is 580 times 100 percent. So 1000 divided by 580 is equal to 1.7. It is 1.72 percent. Next, percentage of uh, uncertainty. Uncertainty. Now it is uh, so we will find for the length there are two values can be for the length it is uh, zero point one is the absolute uncertainty for total is six hundred. So what is the value? 0.1 times 10 divided by 6 is equal to 1.6. 1.6 into 10 here, what is the total uncertainty? Total uncertainty is total uncertainty is one 
times of three q length q volume is times of three plus one point seven two. That's integer uncertainty of the uncertainty uncertainty of volume. Sorry, not volume density. Density. So here I will get the value as three times of one, three times of one second. Yes, one point seven two. See for the six point seven two. This is a good six point seven two. Six point seven two. If it is six point seven two, then we will calculate the uncertainty percentage. That is the actual value. What is the actual value? Here it is uh, thirty two point two nine. So percentage of uncertainty we need to do it is six point seven two times of actual value means of actual value is the uncertainty actual density. Name three other essay 
face quantities and their numbers. So you can take any like uh, velocity. Unit is units per second. Next pose. Unit is kg meters. Square minus two. Next nine seconds. Next one is. Next one is Yes, this is pressure P due to liquid complexity is related to the depth of which of the expression P is equal to O G H where T is the acceleration of wave form, that is the acceleration due to the force of gravity. Use this expression to determine the value of the units of the, uh, of the pressure and explain the reaction. Density uh, P is equal to O G H. So use this expression to determine the periodic units of pressure, which is the acceleration of free fall, and the uh, O is related to the depth H by the expression. So Pressure P due to the liquid of density P. So pressure is equal to what is the density? Um, three pressure is equal to density. Density is mass per volume times of G times of H. Now let me derive the um, base unit mass kg volume. Cubic centimeter per acceleration meters per second square height meters. So if we do the simplification for P this unit is kg meter square divided by here I am taking instead of meter it is meter through s square or I will get kg for minus one is for minus two this is the base unit Next, this is for um, 10 students. A unit is often expressed with the prefix. For example, the gram may be written with the prefix kilo as the kilogram. Prefix represents power of 10. In this case, the power of 10 is 10 over 3. Kilo 10 power 3 nano 10 power minus 9. Next, centi is a symbol of 20. C. Mega, this is mega. And 10 power 6 tera 10 power 2. Okay, it is a simple uh, building of lines. Centi, density. Kilo K, micron nu, milli, small m, pico, small p. Next, uh, positive side, kilo, mega, giga, D, capital G, terra, capital T. Symbols we have to use. Okay.